Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sam, and today we're investigating quite a challenging yet rewarding topic. That is, how to value barrier options, that is, knock-in and knock-out options, the payoff structure which we have investigated in one of the most recent videos, using simulations, that is, Monte Carlo simulations and historical simulations. By the way, shout out to Stephen Huntley for suggesting this series of videos. Here we have got a quite established US stock, which is Apple, and its uh, stock price dynamics for the past five years and will seek to value both knock-in and knock-out calls and puts using a Monte Carlo simulation, which is a parametric procedure, as well as historical bootstrap simulation. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. For the barrier option valuation, we first need to figure out what the center price, that is the current price of the underline is. And here we can simply refer to the most recent price at the month end of May 2022, which is $149.64. Uh, we need to also uh, keep in mind what the strike of our barrier options uh, is. And uh, let's assume that it's quite close to the uh, spot price. You can change it later uh, without performing any further calculations, which is uh, the a nice property of the template we're building. So let's stick with 150 so far. And let's um, input the barriers for our puts and calls. Again, most commonly, the puts have a barrier that is below the strike. So let's say 135. That would be the barrier for both the knock in and knock out puts. So down and in and down and out. And for the uh, barrier calls, you most commonly have uh, an upper barrier that's higher than the strike. So let's say 165. That would be a barrier for both our up and in and up and out calls. We also need to uh, input the maturity of our option contracts and let's say 21 days a month. Again, uh, this also can be changed without any uh, hassle. Uh, what we also need to keep in mind is that we'll estimate both of our uh, simulation procedures using historical data. So we'll need to use logarithmic returns for uh, a number of reasons that are quite relevant in option valuation. And uh, that means that we have to calculate logarithmic daily returns. So the logarithm of the ratio of consecutive prices, enforcing it throughout. And that means that we can calculate our average daily return. Again, one of the nice properties of log returns is that you can apply the arithmetic average to them without any loss of consistency and sample standard deviation of such log returns. And finally, we need to know what our sample size is. That is just counting our logarithmic returns. And now let's proceed to the uh, main part of our video, which is how to simulate uh, and use the simulation to extract the fair values, the uh, justified premium for each of the four option contracts that we have in our hands. Well, Unlike with um, vanilla options, where you only care about the uh, final uh, exercise price, where you only care about the final price of the underlying at maturity, that then uh, fully dictates what the payoff of the option contract is, uh, our knock-in and knock-out options also care about the path the underlying price took throughout the maturity period, throughout the lifetime of the option contract. Because, let's say, the price of the underline for the knockout call, even if it is like 160 at the end of the period, however, it reached something like 170 during the period, the option would already become inactive. So you could not exercise it at the end of its lifetime, which is something to keep in mind, uh, which is uh, also the reverse. For example, something like a knock-in put. Even if the price at the very end uh, of the period is something like 140, which is above the barrier and that may hint uh, towards it being uh, inactive. But if 
at some point during the period, the price crossed the 135 barrier, for example, it has been like 130 for uh, a period of time, the uh, option contract would become active and stay active, and you could exercise it at the end, even if the price at the end is not uh, below the barrier. So to keep that in mind, we'll need to simulate the full path of our underlying price and then figure out what the maximum and the minimum price over the course of the period has been to determine whether our knock-in and knock-out options are active or inactive. So let's start with the easy bit. Uh, let's start with simulating the path of the underlying price movement. We'll start by inputting our center price as the price at day zero, because, well, at day zero, nothing has yet happened. And in every consecutive day, we scale the previous underlying price by the exponent of a simulated log return. And that is another nice property of log returns that comes in handy for such simulations. If you plug it into the exponential function, you get back one plus regular holding period return, which is very convenient and handy mathematically. So we plug in the normal uh, inverse distribution, norm.inv. Our probability is a random number between zero and one, so just the ran function in Excel. And as our mean and standard deviation, we plug in the average we have estimated, locking it throughout, as well as the volatility we have estimated, locking it throughout. And that allows us to estimate the path the underlying price takes uh, throughout the lifetime of the option. So here, for example, in this simulation, the price has first dropped slightly, and then it started a rally reaching 175 as its highest and ending up on 169, which is quite relevant for our barrier option pricing. What is also quite um, neat in terms of the uh, Monte Carlo simulation with random numbers is whenever you do anything with cells, all of the simulations uh, recalculate automatically, meaning that you always have a new simulation uh, taking place on your spreadsheet. If you don't want that, you can, at the end of your calculations, just save and paste all of your simulated prices as values to avoid the um, your Excel spreadsheet to recalculate uh, the simulations every single time. However, what we are interested in now is to figure out what the last price is, and we can see that it changed because the simulation has run again. The maximum price, the all-time highest price throughout the contract's lifetime, and the lowest, the minimum price throughout the contract's lifetime. And now we need to um, estimate what these prices imply for the payoffs of our uh, barrier options. And here we estimate the gross payoffs only as the purpose of our simulations is to estimate the fair value, which is the fair premium that those options would theoretically entail. So first we need to investigate the gross payoff of a knock-in call. We need to check whether the underlying price at some point during the option's lifetime broke through the up barrier of 165. So if our maximum price is below the up barrier, which is 165, then the option remains inactive, meaning that its gross payoff is zero. However, if it is active, if it has become active, then the conventional long call logic applies. The maximum of zero, as well as the difference between the last price, again, we exercise it at the end, so last price it is, not the max price, minus the strike, which is over here. So here we see in this particular simulation, given that the max price is below the barrier, even though the last price is above the strike, the knock-in call remained inactive, so we couldn't exercise it and gained a payoff of zero. For the knockout call, we can copy this formula and tweak it slightly, reflecting the fact that if the max price is greater or equal to the up barrier, so if this barrier has been reached at some point, then the option will become inactive, and otherwise it would be a conventional long call. So here, quite conveniently, we have got a case, a simulation, where our maximum price is below the barrier, and our last price, 
the uh, at the end of the uh, lifetime at maturity is above the strike, meaning that we can exercise our knockout call beneficially for a gross payoff of $2.16 per share. For the knock input, um, the uh, idea is very similar. We need to check if the minimum price of um, the underlying throughout the period is below or at the down barrier that we need to lock. And in that case, the option becomes active, meaning that we can um, input the conventional payoff of a long put contract, which is the maximum of zero and the difference between the strike and the last price at the end of the contract's lifetime. and zero otherwise, because if the down barrier is not reached, the option remains inactive and we cannot exercise it no matter what. So here we see that in this case, the stock went on a very pronounced bullish rally and the uh, knock input had no chance of being uh, activated. Whereas the knock in call, given the fact that the up barrier has been well breached, returns a hefty $44.95 per share. For the knock out call, then we can copy this formula and tweak the logic of it as the knock out put would be active only if the minimum price is above the down barrier, as it's a down and out put, and it becomes inactive when the down barrier is reached. And then quite handily, we can just bottom right click all of these formulas all the way down. And we see uh, that, and that's a good sanity check, that in every single instance, only one of the options has a positive gross payoff. That is a signal that we've done everything correctly. And we can uh, integrate, uh, use our thousand simulations to figure out what the fair values of these um, options would be in terms of the parametric log normal simulation. So the fair value of the knock-in call would be just the average of the gross payoffs it delivers on average. And we can enforce this logic throughout all four option types. As well as we can proceed to our next simulation, which would be a historical bootstrap. And here we have got 1,237 simulations that we can do. And, uh, well, you might ask why. Well, remember, we have got 1,258 uh, observations, 1,258 returns, and a 21 period to estimate uh, the path of the underlying four. So using overlapping 21-day periods, we can effectively bootstrap the returns of Apple and uh, look at all possible scenarios that happened historically to the price dynamics of Apple and see what it would mean for a hypothetical barrier option being held or purchased at some point in time of the last five years. Keeping that in mind, we can uh, still simulate our price at day zero as the center price here, $149.64 uh, per share. However, here, instead of simulating return, we would take it from the observed returns uh, in the sample using the beauty of the index function. So we scale our uh, previous price by the exponent of the index. And here we'll need to refer to the full range of historical returns, locking them throughout. And to determine which of them do we choose, well, we can put um, this particular uh, index of the simulation as our first identificator and here we need to lock the column as we want to drag it across but as we drag it down we want it to select a different subsample plus the uh, number of a day that we select from this overlapping bootstrapping period and lock the row here as we don't want it to change as we drag it down but do want it to change as we drag it across and then we close the appropriate number of parentheses and perform the simulation. And what is quite handy is that everything else that we've got 
is the same. So we can copy this um, selection of cells and paste them here, resulting in a new calculation for gross payoffs of uh, our barrier options in a particular uh, bootstrap 21v window. And bottom like click it all the way down for the historical simulation. And finally, figure out what the fair value of the barrier options given our historical bootstrap simulation is. Again, dragging it around. And we can see that the values are quite similar, uh, meaning that, well, both approaches could theoretically work. However, the uh, difference that I uh, observe immediately is that the values of uh, knock-in options, uh, particularly knock-in calls, is higher for the parametric simulation and uh, the value of the knock-out uh, calls is lower in the parametric simulation, which means that um, historically it has been the case that uh, very explosive volatility that uh, brought uh, share prices uh, away uh, through uh, the barrier were less frequent than you would assume. And that actually uh, reflects uh, a nice property of um, volatility of uh, stock prices, which is that they are thin peaked and heavy tailed. So uh, there are instances when the uh, share price movement is absolutely massive, but there are very few instances where it is um, medium volatility, basically. And that uh, reflects the fact the thin peaked distribution of asset returns reflects the fact that historically knockout calls are more uh, beneficial and more valuable than you would assume here. Whereas uh, the reverse is true for uh, knockout puts, um, interestingly enough, and that reflects negatively skewed uh, distributions of returns, uh, meaning that, um, well, it's more likely that the bearish uh, movement that you could see in stock prices would persist. Uh, and if we play around with our input data, for example, if we uh, assume our down barriers and up barriers are much uh, more strict, so like 100 and 200, here we would see that uh, no uh, value is extracted from knock-in calls or puts in a parametric simulation However, they would have non-zero value in the historical simulation uh, just because the uh, heavy-tailed nature of um, real-world asset return distributions allows for that. And we all obviously can play around um, other inputs, for example, increase the strike by a bit and uh, lead to very similar uh, cases than with conventional option valuation with uh, calls becoming uh, less valuable and puts becoming more valuable. Uh, and you could also uh, change your uh, average returns and your volatility to scale the simulations accordingly. The main downside of this particular method is that it is quite uh, computationally demanding. You need to perform, well, uh, thousands of simulations potentially to uh, execute your uh, task. And uh, for the parametric simulation, you do assume normality, which or log normality, which uh, is a questionable assumption uh, to say the least. And your results also change from execution to execution. So sometimes, uh, and especially if you have got fewer simulations and your result can be very noisy, you can make a suboptimal investment decision based on some realization of your um, random uh, number generator seed. Uh, to say the least. For historical simulation, uh, these uh, particular limitations uh, are avoided. However, uh, you should also keep in mind that five years is a very long time, and the more precise you want your simulation to be, the longer back in time do you need to venture. And uh, again, that might uh, provide you with the risk that the data you pick from like 2017 will be practically irrelevant for potential movements of the Apple stock price in 2022. So choose wisely and acknowledge the assumptions of both of these methods. And um, that's all there is for valuing barrier options with simulations.
Please leave a like on this video if I'm helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.